to the three R's videos. This is one of three videos of the three R's which are researching, writing and referencing and they're presentations which are provided to the Mount Helen campus of the University of Ballarat students. My name is Talia Barrett and I'm an academic advisor at UB and my librarian colleague here is Peggy Shu. Hi. Knowing where to start with any assessment task at university can be daunting and often downright scary. So in this presentation we will examine where to start and how to analyse an assignment topic. Then we will guide you towards how you can start researching and working with the information you find. There is also useful software like RefWorks which Peggy will highlight briefly at the end. But before you start any topic analysis it's important to think about some basic elements of your assignment. It can be helpful to ask yourself the following questions. First of all, why did my lecturer set this task? In other words, which learning objectives from my course outline is this assessment topic testing? Where does this task fit into this course overall? Secondly, what skills does my lecturer want me to demonstrate in this task? Essay or report writing? Building an argument? Analysis of ideas? A particular style of referencing? One place you can also check is a marking guide which many lecturers provide in the course outline, which is like a checklist of what needs to be included in the assessment. If you constantly refer to that as your guide, there should be less risk of you missing something out as you go. But remember that as a university student, your role is to learn a new language, the language of your discipline you are studying, whether it's nursing, business, education, and you need to demonstrate your knowledge of that language in your writing. So by the end of your degree, the hope is that you will be able to converse and interact fluently with the professionals in your field. Learning to write well in higher education is where you start. From the outset, it's important to be clear about what kind of assignment you are expected to write and its structure. If it's an essay, there will be an introduction, body, conclusion, reference list. You'll be using topic sentences as the beginning of each paragraph and no headings unless specified by your lecturer. If it's a report it has a similar structure to an essay but headings are always used and usually numbering for each section. You may be asked to include an appendix as well. If it's a case study it will have a similar structure to a report but again your marking guide will provide that information. Or you may be asked to initiate your own research and write your own topic or hypothesis. Always seek clarification from your lecturer if you are unclear. The marking guide will also tell you how many words you need to write and this is crucial to the amount of research you will need to do. In other words, there is no point in reading 35 books and journals if you are only required to write a 1500 word essay when you will only often need to include about 6 to 10 references. So understand the extent of researching you will be required to undertake so you don't waste valuable time. Always check the amount of writing you will need to produce. Either way, for all assessment tasks you are expected to address a particular topic. So let's start with how to approach that. Analyzing the topic correctly is crucial to obtaining as many marks as you can for an assignment. If you overlook a key word in the topic or misunderstand an instructional word, then it will be all too easy to write about the wrong thing or describe instead of discuss. First of all, make sure you understand the meanings of all the words in the topic. Remember, lecturers will be expecting you to start developing an understanding of the language of your discipline. So the meanings of your words may have a discipline-specific meaning. For example, aged care for a nurse will mean something different for a public servant working for the government. So first of all, use your lecture notes and readings to confirm definitions of some key words as a starting point. Also, rewriting the topic in your own words can help clarify what you need to focus on. If you work out what the question is asking, you'll have a better idea of what you should be researching. This three-step process can be applied to any assignment topic and is extremely helpful in making sure you don't miss out anything when you come to writing. First of all, circle the instructional words. These are the words or verbs that tell you what to do. 
For example, discuss, analyse, evaluate, identify and so on. Secondly, underline the keywords. These are words that are central to your research and may need defining. They also tell you what to focus on and provide a starting point for your research. Thirdly, bracket the limiting words. These words set limits on what you need to focus on. A particular time, location or group of people you are required to examine. Here is an example of a topic. By applying the steps of topic analysis you can see how much easier it is now to identify the focus of your assignment and which words will guide you with your research. But before you even start accessing databases in the library catalogue, you may not realise that you already have a lot of resources at your fingertips, which can be your springboard to seeking more information. You actually already know something about aspects of this topic, either from your own life experience and or from your course outline, lecture and tutorial notes, and your readings, especially if you have a prescribed textbook. Therefore, you can already start brainstorming what you know without having even looked at a computer. Amazing! Brainstorming is a really important step as it helps you to identify what you already know about a topic and, more importantly, helps you identify any gaps in your knowledge that you need to fill. You may already have a brainstorming technique that works well for you, but if you don't, there are a couple of helpful methods you can use. A mind map and a comparison grid. A mind map can look like this very organic shape here with a central idea in the middle of the page from which you can create links to relevant ideas or points. It's a way of building a visual image of your topic. This is an example of a mind map using the topic of international students we analysed earlier. But if you prefer a more linear approach, a comparison grid of views is helpful in organising your information and its sources. A comparison grid helps you to summarise information you already have, identify connections between ideas and formulate your own opinion. Again, I've used the topic of international students to demonstrate how you can organise your ideas or information. The information here is from a newspaper article, lecture notes and prescribed readings. The sources of this information are what can be at hand without even clicking on the library's internet homepage. This last column entitled, Therefore I Think, is really important. Even if you are a first year student, you are still expected to develop an opinion. You may not be an expert in the field yet, but by reading you will be starting to develop an understanding of the issues and therefore have some sense of whether you agree or disagree with the writer's points. For your writing to be convincing, it is crucial that you have a clear sense of what you think yourself, even if you're not expected to express those ideas completely. As I mentioned earlier, by using the mind map, comparison grid or whatever technique you prefer, you can organise your thoughts and highlight any gaps in your knowledge, always keeping in mind the key words from your topic. Then you can start researching widely. At this point, your friendly librarian can now guide you through this process. Thank you, Peggy.